Hello YouTube, I recently wanted a Lenovo laptop after hearing they were pretty robust. After researching, this apparently applies more so to the older models, just as I was about to plop down some serious cash for the newest T14 Gen 3, I began looking at used alternatives since I can't have nice things anyways. I opted for the T480, which many consider one of the last great models due to the possibility of customizing it after purchase. Most of these also come with the eighth generation Intel processors, so this is one of the oldest T laptops still officially supported for Windows 11. Starting with the T490 onwards, more and more components became integrated or soldered on, reducing or even eliminating the possibility of future hardware upgrades. This modern trend forces you to estimate and buy what you need up front, often at a price premium since there are no third-party alternatives. When you exceed that capacity, the laptop is chucked and it's time to buy a new one. I say all this with the following caveat. This entire video is geared toward typical users, so keep that in mind because with money and skills, anything is technically possible. I purchased my laptop from eBay, and at the time of this video, there is no shortage of choices, likely due to expiring factory warranties. A good way to search is to type in T480 followed by the processor you desire because those are soldered in and can't be upgraded. If you need a fingerprint reader, filter for that too because there is no easy way to add that in as well. Otherwise, if you want a good deal and have some patience, I have seen some steals on bidding auctions. I personally opted for the buy it now listings since I was on a time crunch to complete this project. Sort from low to high price and you will see mixed results including both the T480 and T480S models. If you want maximum memory, storage, and battery upgradability, you want the non-S version. Otherwise, if a subjectively better build quality matters more to you, then buy the S. This video focuses on the non-S model since I prefer maximum upgradability. As expected, the cheapest listings are often machines beyond repair and should be avoided because many core components are missing or damaged. It's listed as parts only for a reason. These are usually priced around $200 and below. On the other hand, you don't want to pay too much because I have seen listings close to $1,000, which is the same price as a brand new minimum spec T14. Completely intact and operational machines can be bought starting around three to $400 and upwards. The pricier laptops usually have the better processors, more memory and storage, as well as healthy batteries since OEM replacements are expensive. Surprisingly, some of the more expensive machines have the same or more cosmetic flaws than the cheaper ones, so you really need to compare multiple listings. These include nicks, scratches on the casing, smudges and discoloration on the trackpad. I would personally pass on machines with missing keyboard keys, trackpad buttons, and especially a damaged screen. Although the screens are replaceable, it is more involved in terms of labor, and more importantly, it's getting more difficult to find a replacement screen from a reputable supplier. I would avoid machines with the 1366 by 768 resolution screen. Fortunately, most of the listings I've seen come with the 1920 by 1080 Full HD panel. My goal is to find a machine that needs minimal work to get running for the least amount of money possible. I bought one in the low $200 price range to allow budget for upgrades. These will typically be missing the hard drive and Windows Certificate of Authenticity, or COA. As mentioned earlier, they likely have cosmetic flaws as well. The machine I chose includes the Windows license tied to the BIOS, 8GB of RAM, and both batteries. All I have to do is pop in the hard drive and it should run, assuming the listing was honest and accurate. While unboxing the laptop, I lucked out because the cosmetic wear is not as bad as shown on the eBay listing. A lot of agencies dispose these machines in bulk and reuse the same eBay listing for all of them. I powered on and went into the Lenovo UEFI, which runs common hardware tests. After I felt reasonably comfortable it was not a dud, I opened up the case. Remove the external battery by sliding the side tabs. If you have the S model, there is only an internal battery. The PowerBridge dual battery is one of the biggest perks of the non-S models. Loosen the four outer screws. The two inner ones hold the keyboard in place. The screws won't fall out and get lost. 
Starting from the back, pry it open and work your way around slowly so you don't damage the plastic. I used the window tint hard card, but anything similar will do. Since there is no storage, I am going to install a SSD by buying the Caddy and adapter. It supports a relatively modern M.2 NVMe 2280 form factor PCIe Gen 3 by 4 SSD. That's a long, long sentence. According to Lenovo, it actually runs at times 2 speed due to a hardware limitation. You can also install another NVMe SSD in this WAN slot, but this is a smaller 2242 form factor that is also Gen 3 times 2. This option is not present on the S models. Looking around, we can see the CPU is soldered and so are the USB-C connectors on the side. More on this later as there is a known firmware issue with the controller on these laptops. Here are the two memory slots which are both upgradable. If you have the S model, one of these is soldered with up to 8GB and a total of 40GB is possible by sticking a 32GB module in the other slot. On this model, there are two slots that accept up to 32GB each for a total of 64GB. The type of memory used is SODIMM DDR4 2400 MHz, so make sure you buy the right one. As I begin my upgrades, I ground myself to avoid static discharge. I also suggest disconnecting this internal 24 watt hour battery before doing any work. If you need to remove it, it's simply secured by two screws. I removed the existing 8GB memory module by lifting the retaining clips on each side. The memory pops right out. Line up the notches on the new and old memory modules so you know the correct orientation. Slide the new one back in and press it down lightly. It automatically clicks and locks in place. Next, I install the SSD. As with the memory sticks, simply line up the SSD notch with the one on the controller. It should slide in easily. From there, it is secured to the caddy with three screws. There is then a metal shield that goes over the top and is held by two more screws. Flip the caddy over and slide it in from left to right and it clips in place. Attach the cable connector and slide the retaining clip over to secure it. I am going to install a second SSD in the WAN slot. I bought this King Spect on sale for Black Friday. Although commonly used on these laptops, it is still a lower tier SSD, so don't have too many expectations. I am going to simply use it as a backup drive. FYI, these drives are extremely expensive for what they are and rare to find. If you had to choose, you are better off buying a higher capacity 2280 SSD for the main drive. This drive is also a B plus M style, which has two notches. The single notch drives won't work and is a common buying mistake. Loosen the screw and slide the drive in. It sticks up until you secure it down, so don't lose that screw. Finally, I install a smart card reader. This is one of the hardest pieces to find, probably because not many people ordered these laptops with them when new. There appears to be several model numbers that should work. This one has the ARC design. If you have more information or details, leave it down in the comments below. Remove these two screws and set the speaker aside. The plastic blank is secured by two screws that use a different size screwdriver, so take note not to strip the heads. The orientation of the drive can be determined by the cable, which makes a L shape. Attach the cable to the drive first. Pull out this clip and push the end of the cable in. Push the lock back in to secure it in place. On the mainboard side, lift up the retaining clip, insert the other cable end and lock it down. They have a dash line that gives you a rough idea of where things should line up. If unsure, reference the other cables on the board. Reassembly is simply the reverse. Screw the smart car reader down and reattach the speaker. Note that even tighten, it wiggles and appears to be normal. Reattach the internal battery and dust off the fan. Power on the machine and generally speaking, it either works or it doesn't. I reinstalled my software, downloaded the Lenovo Vantage app, and completed some updates. Speaking of which, one of the biggest issues with these older Lenovo laptops is a bad firmware on the Thunderball controller. It causes the ports to stop working after some time. At that point, you can no longer charge your laptop. I don't know if the firmware was updated prior to me buying this laptop, but if you go to the Thunderbolt controller app and the version is 20 or over, you are good to go. This is probably the biggest gamble of buying these machines used and don't count on the sellers to tell you this information. 
The other issue typical of any used laptop is both batteries won't hold a good charge. Since I don't really want to deal with knockoff batteries and the possibility of fire, I am going to keep using it as is for now, since all my laptops are plugged in most of the time. In conclusion, if you consider the fact that this laptop only needed a SSD, I got it up and running for less than $250. Since I decided to max out the memory and storage and bought additional parts, my total cost was about $500. Around the holiday weekend, I spec'd out a brand new T14 Gen 3 with similar upgrades to what this T480 had when it came out. The second highest processor, Windows Pro, 48 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD, a screen upgrade, fingerprint reader, backlit keyboard, smart car reader, and upgraded battery. It was close to two grand after tax. I paid a quarter of the price, but it also comes with obvious drawbacks that money can't fix. I don't get the newer, thinner bezel screens, and obviously newer processors will be faster and more power efficient, in theory. However, for home and business use, it is perfect, and what I really bought was some time, before I really need to go out and spend big bucks for the latest and greatest.